Um, everyone in this room, of course, um, likes stability. Everyone in markets likes stability. Um, if you were to continue to, start to, to decide to continue the uh, production cuts, do you, could you see that the extension of cuts lasting until the end of next year? Well, I'm saying that we don't know yet whether we are going to extend or not, and the question is being asked until when we're going to extend it. Well, I mean, once we decide to extend or not to extend, that is when we're going to decide on the time frame. But overall, speaking about the possible extension as a minimum towards the end of 2018. Let me just talk one final question I'll, I'll talk a little bit more generally. You've, you've always said that Russia would never join OPEC. Has, this, has the, the success of this agreement changed your mind on that? Is it something you would think about again? No, it hasn't changed my state of mind towards it, particularly as all uh, see and as all analysts uh, note even the fact of us not being inside OPEC enables us to effectively coordinate our joint work. To bind us by a certain administrative restriction is something that we believe is unnecessary, but we shall continue to work with the OPEC countries and with the major producers, not simply on voluntary, but upon mutually beneficial basis. When we were agreeing about who and by how much and within which period of time is supposed to cut production, that was a difficult process because everybody was looking at what kind of a level of output uh, different countries had by a different point in time from which period of time individual countries are supposed to cut. That was not a simple job. We were ready to meet each other halfway, and we did that, and our partners acted in the same token for the interests of stabilizing the global energy market. We do have a positive experience, and that is what we're going to rely upon.